Kevin Camps is with us. He is the uh, nuclear waste watchdog at Beyond Nuclear, beyondnuclear.org. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Tom. We just had a fellow from the Breakthrough Institute telling us how wonderful nuclear power was. Mm. Actually, he was trying to. We kind of got sidetracked on carbon taxes and my being crazy. But in any case, I understand that, uh, A, the the guy who is sort of the original hero of Fukushima, who stayed and tried to keep the plant from melting down, just died of cancer. And, B, that uh, some of the nuclear watchdogs in, in the Fukushima area in Japan are saying that there's just a naked leak of radiation into the ocean. Uh, take your choice, whichever one you want to talk about first. Well, Yoshida, you know, he did defy Tokyo Electric when they told him to stop cooling the melting down reactors with salt water because they wanted to preserve them for future commercial use, which was insane. They were so in denial. And he disregarded their orders, and he cooled as best he could the reactors with salt water. Unfortunately, he could not stop them from melting down. And, uh, you know, the devil's in the details as to how much radioactivity has gotten out, but that's the latest news that you're saying that's breaking, is that, you know, it looks like uh, the New York Times reported just today, based on the Nuclear Regulatory Authority's chief spokesperson, that the leaks have been going on for two years into the ocean from Fukushima. Yikes! And they have surged recently in the last days and weeks to much higher levels, uh, something like a hundred times the level of cesium and strontium and tritium that's been previously seen in the groundwater near the seaside and even in the ocean itself just offshore. Wow. So he admitted they don't know where the leak is occurring. They don't know how to stop it. So, and cesium does what to the human body? Cesium is a muscle seeker, and it has caused, for example, in Ukraine and Belarus and Russia, a condition called Chernobyl heart, even in children, which is holes in the heart congenitally. Okay, and strontium does what to human beings? Strontium is a bone seeker that causes various uh, bone maladies, including in the bone marrow. Including bone cancer and leukemia? Yeah. Okay, and what was the third element you said? Uh, tritium, which is radioactive hydrogen, which is also a clinically proven cause of cancer and birth defects and genetic damage. And this stuff is just literally pouring out of Fukushima right now as we speak. They have uh, like 100 tons or more of leakage into the uh, basement levels of water, groundwater, on a regular basis, and that's where it's picking up its contamination and then leaking apparently into the ocean after that. And that, that's the same Pacific Ocean that ends up from Oregon all the way down to Southern California on our side of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, and the uh, ocean currents, even uh, certain forms of uh, you know, seafood like tuna actually bring it over here pretty quickly because they're actually swimming, you know, migrating. So, uh, you know, it's the bioaccumulation in the food chain that we really need to worry about. Some people might try to dismiss this as not important because the ocean is so big, the radioactivity will dilute. But the bioaccumulation is what reverses that process, and we sit at the top of the food chain. Right. Now, I know, you know, sometime back we talked, and you were telling me about efforts, volunteer groups who are putting together monitoring stations, both for air and water, but also uh, looking for things like cesium in, in the fish. Uh, yeah. What's the status of that? Well, the... Uh Fukushima Fallout Awareness Network is one of the, the great um, coalitions happening in North America, and they're really uh, urging the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to take this issue seriously, to put official federal monitoring at a much higher alert level on the food that's you know coming from the ocean, that's even being imported from Japan, because our regulations are much weaker than Japan's. Japan allows for 100, 100 becquerels per kilogram of radioactive cesium in food. Beyond that, it's considered unfit for human consumption. Incredibly, in the U.S., the standard is 1,200 becquerels per kilogram. So we Whoa. usually could be importing Japanese contaminated food into the United States. Whoa. And is, is this uh, Japanese contaminated food that is too radioactive for Japan, so they're exporting it? You're talking about seafood? Uh, all, all food. Um, even crops that are being grown, not just in Fukushima Prefecture, but in adjacent prefectures. So, Things like rice? Yes, you name it. I mean, I've uh, checked the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, website from time to time to see the list grow of the various foods that are being contaminated in Japan and at, at certain different levels. Now, this is, 
this is what could be and what the levels are, what is actually being measured? Do you have, you know, like, uh, you know, hey, this group of, of 15 people in Portland, Oregon just discovered, you know, in this restaurant, you know, salmon that kicks a Geiger counter at this point. Is there anything like that? I think it's still in the initial stages to try to set up those kind of systems. I mean, it's even been forced on the people of Japan to do their own food analysis because their government, which is in bed with the nuclear industry, isn't doing anywhere near an adequate job. So, for example, there's a family in uh, Kyoto, I'm sorry, in Osaka, that has set up its own food monitoring system. They paid something like 10000 or $15,000 to acquire it from Ukraine, of all places, who have hmm. to deal with the aftermath of Chernobyl. And they are checking the food not only for their own children, but for their children's schoolmates. And mm-hmm. so they've set up kind of a single elementary school guarding its own children's food supply. But that's And what are they finding? Well, um, I haven't heard recently, but they are on guard against uh, their children eating any contaminated food above a certain level. Yeah, amazing. And that above the certain level, that's where the devil's in the details, because there is no safe level of radiation. That's right. Artificial radioactivity is harmful. Yeah, period. No nukes. Beyondnuclear.org is the website. Kevin Camps, the Nuclear Waste Watchdog. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, thank you, Tom. Always great talking to you. If you want more information, get over to beyondnuclear.org. We'll be right back.